Well, they would be more likely to do that than a lot of other things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't run a little transmitter on that down. Well, that would get you in hot water quicker than uh, 10 years of Billy. Yeah, and then they uh, sent you a letter saying that, <clears throat> excuse me, that um, you could get up to a $2 million fine from oh, brother. Well, get on here tomorrow night, and I'll be on the radio. I I don't know if the band's just been bad, but I haven't heard anybody in ages. I haven't either. I check fairly pretty regularly, but uh, not at the right times, I guess. I've checked at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and then ten o'clock, and after that, I usually kind of give up. Do you just call out, or do you just listen? Well, I call out. So did you bring your telescope over there, Alex? No, I didn't. Uh, I, I just think we didn't have time. Uh, we'd be uh, so busy. Uh, we had so many other things that uh, probably not have a, a, a proper opportunity to look at the night sky. The night sky here is pretty good, though. It, it was pretty good here, but now we got lots of mosquitoes and there's been quite a bit of cloud cover. But um, I've been trying to find a hand controller for a couple of these. Uh, Celestrons, they've got a, uh, a 90 and 102 millimeter refractor, and they, um, well, I think that the, the base mount, the go-to mount is for the 90, but I'm pretty sure the 102 would fit on it fine. So the, the hand controllers are kind of like, well, you might buy one and it might work, or it might not. Uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, Dale something, what's that? Uh. Well, and I think um, one of them, I think, I've got, actually got two of them. One is off of something I gave away, but it was a, a, a Nexstar, uh, 114 millimeter. I, it was a Bird Jones. I gave it away, but I kept the base. And um, that one is an older one that needs a hand controller also, but this other one's a little bit newer, and it was a refractor. So I could easily take uh, one of these smaller, um, like the National Geographic 114, and put it on that. Uh, but it just, uh, don't you don't see these pop up very often at thrift stores with the controllers. Yeah, you might like to look at one of those... Uh... I have drawn equatorial mouth or one of those Skywatcher equatorial mouth or maybe even uh, uh, Celestron equatorial mouth. I wouldn't want to, I, I wouldn't like a Celestron because they try to be uh, 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 unique. I saw this thing on Craigslist. It must have been like a 10 or a 12 inch telescope with like a 90 or 120 millimeter piggyback refractor on it on some ungodly thing that looked like some weird office chair of an EQ mount and he only wanted 150 bucks but it had already sold before I contacted him yeah sometimes they show up on eBay well, this was down in Tucson, so I could have drove down there to get it. And I mean, it was obviously a huge, huge thing. They also have a, uh, uh, such about that, uh, Tommy Knight. Have you ever uh, looked at Tommy Knight? Yeah, uh, I haven't looked at their classifieds. I've, I've posted quite a bit on there. If you go on there and look, you'll see lots of postings by me. It just says Power Stroke is the name. There's a big thread. Is my 114-inch Dobsonian, or is my Newtonian really spherical? Or, uh, 
or uh, what do they call it? Uh, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, this is a very complicated. I've got my uh, laser 60 inch uh, uh, Dubsonian. It works for that. It's a good one. I'll perform your Dubsonian. <laughs> right. So I I posted this thread to ask about the old Japanese-made mead. Is it a spherical or parabolic mirror? And of course, you know, that's like, it literally turned into like a 14-page thread. Right. They'll start arguing about, hey, wait, a hyperbolic one will even be better, and so forth and so on. And, and they'll forget about you. A hyperbolic. <laughs> yeah, they'll say, you'll never end. It's never-ending uh, problem. And sometimes it becomes very funny because the, the, the people involved in the discussion get so upset. <laughs> Yeah, the guy in Australia, he he really uh, he really wants to argue about it. His name's Alex, and uh, I forget what his other name is on there. But I mean, he knows a lot, but he's just like always the first to like be like the naysayer. They're all they're all spherical. They're all junk. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, I should look that up one time. I haven't looked into a uh, cloudy night in a while. But, uh, I should look at just for the laugh of it. Yeah, just go in there and search up the username Power Stroke, like my truck, Power Stroke, and you will find all my silly postings on there. Uh, where again, say, I, I, want, I want to check that out. Which one? What, uh, what subject? The, well, if you look up my username, you'll, you'll find my postings and my threads. But it was in the beginner's forum. And it was about, uh, is it spherical or parabolic? Oh, okay. All right. That'll be easy to find. Yeah, and so, but my username on there is Power Stroke. So you'll, you'll see that I was the one that started it. You'll know that's the one. And those guys have been super helpful, really. I mean, there's really just a little confusion on stuff that probably doesn't even matter, you know? Even if it is spherical... At the focal length of, uh, you know, like 910, I mean, they say it doesn't even matter. Yeah, there are some uh, uh, really knowledgeable people uh, on that forum, but uh, for the most part, they don't talk too much because they get roasted by the nasty uh, people, nasty other ones. Yep. Well, I just basically bought a lot of telescopes. Every time I saw a cheap telescope, I bought it. And I did a whole lot of learning, and I fixed a bunch of broken telescopes. And, and that was a priceless experience for me. And we started out with a small telescope and got bigger and bigger and bigger. And so now we're at the 8-inch uh, telescope, and she loves it. Yeah, that was your 8-inch stuff. You're, you're going to see a lot of serious stuff with where you are. So the the eight inch and the six inch are, uh, you know, um, there's a little bit of a difference, but it's actually not as big as I thought it would be. But then if you go to a like a four and a half, oh, it's a huge difference. Yeah. Uh, can't do it with that, uh, although that'll be a little too high for uh, August. Oh, we have a little step stool out there, so they've seen Saturn and uh, Jupiter, and um, I think maybe even the Pinwheel Galaxy. Oh, I'm sure Saturn would be delightful. It, it was really good about a month ago. Um, so supposedly this month it's going to be in opposition somewhere later in August. Yeah, my next uh, favorite would be Jupiter. Very easy to see. So here, uh, early in the morning, about a month ago, you would see Jupiter and you'd be able to see like a bunch of the moons and stuff. And um, even with a, a small telescope, you could see it, you know. You could use a 60 millimeter refractor and see the moons of Jupiter. Yes, even a small one, yes. I mean, that, that right there is like, if somebody that's interested takes like the smallest telescope and looks at Jupiter, they're going to catch the bug. Yeah, the small telescopes, they just need a good 3D base so that they can be uh, comfortable to look through. 
Yeah, that's why I don't really do too much high power stuff because I, I realized really quick that like, yep, any little bit of wobble, you know, you go down to like a, a four millimeter, or, you know, lens and it's like almost impossible. And then trying to track something, oh, it's really bad. So I, I usually like to use like a 10 or a 15 millimeter eyepiece. That's why a lot of people lose interest because their mounts are very uh, uh, shaky or their tripods are too soft. The, those discs got to be really uh, solid, so the telescope would be much more delightful to use. I think the, the mount and the tripod are more important than the telescope. Oh, you're definitely right. So I had to build a mount for the, um, the Skywatcher because it didn't come with one. And I had to build a mount for the Orion because it didn't come with one. And so I just basically made my own out of plywood and stuff like that, but it's not perfect. And, um, it, but it works as good as anything else I have, but it, it is kind of uh, touchy. So what I did was I put a record between one of them. The other one I put, um, grease between it. Um, and actually that works better. So you take grease, like from, you know, a grease gun and you put it in between the two pieces of wood and then tighten it down. Interesting. Yeah, why not? Yeah, come to think of it, grease is uh, uh, easier than finding the blonde strips. Right, so it, it just kind of acts like a fluid coupler. But we have the usual, you know, EQ mounts from the 80s, uh, you know, for these four and a half inch, you know. Newtonians and, and they're they're good until you try and look at high power and then the thing's shaking so damn bad you're like oh my god yeah, if you keep shaking then you will lose interest well but if you're looking at you know stuff with you know wide field of view and, and low power it, it can be a lot of fun I like to kind of look at a lot of stuff at once and you know so I don't really go high power Yeah, I just need to spend a little more time trying to get this one that I made a little bit better. The problem is we left it outside and the wood warped. I told you I have an Orion 14 inch and one day when I have the uh, motivation, I want to uh, build a new base for it. It's got, I've got the Orion base, but that base is so heavy, it's, uh, it's so difficult to use. I, I'm sure I could build something a lot lighter. Yeah, this, this one here, um, we uh, take the telescope off of it and leave the base in the backyard and uh we weren't even home and we forgot about it and a monsoon came through oh did it uh break apart no it's um the bottom piece part is from a tabletop and it's like some kind of plywood with a laminate on it and it warped so it's delaminated yeah so uh i just need to make a bottom bottom part the two side arms um, are out of like uh, 12 ply plywood with oak veneer and they held up perfectly fine through the rain. So my problem is uh, it's a little bit uh, wobbly now and um, so um, I think I'm trying to remember what the record is. Oh it's this really bad band from the 70s called Dr. Hook. We're making a joke about it. <laughs> Given that your location is uh, dark, you might like to build something in your backyard to just uh, uh, make a big uh, stationary mounting. Oh, really? You can just like have it to where it can't move on the bottom? Yeah, that would be a good idea. Right now I'm building a structure to put solar panels on. It's funny, when uh, Floyd was, uh, when he moved, 
he, uh, well, just before he moved, he was building the, the, the home that he was going to move into. Oh. And so he was asking me, what do you think would I, uh, how should I do here? And I said, hey, why don't you uh, build a bedroom with a uh, removable roof so you can uh, watch the stars from your bedroom? <laughs> That would be cool. Like a, a retractable stadium. Yeah, it, it actually is a good idea. If you can do that, you know, you have rollers on the roofs, and so you can roll the whole roof off and then you have open sky right above your bedroom. <laughs> it's a convertible. Yeah, a convertible, yes, that's right. What's you doing, Junior? Uh oh, Junior's back out here. Yeah, I don't know. I I would. I almost wish I could just buy one of the ba uh, bases for the, uh, the Skywatcher because it it has another piece on the side for like a tensioning thing that you can't really make yourself. I think B and H actually sells the bottom, um, but uh, some other people had kind of mentioned that they looked at it on the website and it won't let you check it out. So uh, even though it's listed on there, I don't think you can actually buy it. Come here. And there you sign around on the floor? A little bit. <laughs> say, say hello. Hi, <laughs> Junior, say hello to Alex. Hello, Alex. You tell him you're not feeling good? Yes. Oh, what are you doing, August? Okay. Oh boy, you're full of sugar. Say hello. He's not hyper, is he? Hey. Stop. Sit down. That sounds like they're gonna keep you awake tonight. Yeah, no, Junior is like ready for bed. But uh, August is like wound up. You know, they used to say wound up like a wooden watch, but how the hell does that make sense? Have you ever wound up a wooden watch? Uh, a wooden watch? Yeah, people say, oh my god, that guy's wound up like a wooden watch. I'm like, I don't know what the hell a wooden watch would be, and why would it be so wound up? Yeah. I just called them jumpy bugs. So, yeah, so we've got... Um, we got rid of one telescope, I think, and I gave away a couple of others, but we still have this 80 millimeter one that is supposed to have like this thing where you dock your phone into it and you use their app, but we're missing the docking part and it doesn't look like Celestron sells it separately on their website. Your phone, please. Yeah, so you like uh, download the um, Celestron app and then you attach your phone to it, and then there's a mirror that sits behind the phone where the camera is, and it uses it to do a star alignment. Yeah. Ouch. Oh my God. What's going on? So uh, basically, it's a go-to uh, telescope, but it uses your phone instead. Oh, I see. But um, we got it at Goodwill, and it was missing the diagonal, yeah. and it was missing the part that holds your phone. And there's another part on top of the telescope that this like dock goes into that holds the phone. So I need a diagonal for it, which I I have, but I mean it's just. Uh, Without the rest of it, there's no point in me using an 80 millimeter. Yeah, definitely. Yep. And they say it works pretty well. But we do have that uh, Mead telescope. It's like an ETX 70 or something. 
and that one is a go-to, and we have everything for that. And she's found an awful lot of stuff with that that we wouldn't have been able to find otherwise. It's kind of like a spotting scope, you know, but with, you know, uh, helps you find stuff. And then I guess then, you you know, if you're really careful, you can pull out the big guns and, and try and find the same thing. Yeah, that'd be cool. We've never been to any kind of star party things or anything. Yeah, it's an automatic star party when it's uh, viewing night out here. Because the city is so big, the population is so large, and there are only just a few viewing points. So uh, everybody goes to those uh, well-known viewing points. There's no other way. There's no other place. So what, what's the, the nearest one for you? So do you just see people with big, huge telescopes there, or is it just kind of like look like something that they bought off of Amazon, or what does it look like? Yeah, everything. Yeah, it's a collection of everything. Well, that'd be pretty cool. We kind of like got a couple of telescopes with the intentions of going somewhere far away. But actually, where we live is actually really good. Um, but I, we could go up to like Seligman or, you know, in between Kingman and, and Flagstaff on I-40 is really good. Um, but it's also pretty good here. So I, it's, uh, you know, there's light pollution everywhere you go, you know, but... Um, some of those areas might be a little bit better. Yeah, for sure. Like, the use won't go away. But at least where you are, enjoy it while you can. We don't have any kind of street lights here, really. They have, like, a random street light between, like, main intersections. But, you know, in the residential areas that we live, there aren't sidewalks and there aren't street lights. Flagstaff has a uh, ordinance about uh, light pollution. Did you know that? Yeah, I know. Is that amazing? How thoughtful. Also, uh, what, what was that place? Fountain Hills. Fountain Hills, uh, which is in Phoenix, kind of uh, near uh, northeast. Northeast. Um, they have a, a, a thing where lights have to point a certain direction. Places. They have uh, subdivisions where they have the streets named after the planet. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, and that is a really nice looking place too. You drive through and you're like, uh, all the little mountains and hills and stuff around there are pretty cool. But it's so damn hot in the middle of summer. <laughs> about uh, the story I heard or I read that uh, Sunday night for they went viewing for the night for the Gonsonian and they uh, they killed the Gonsonian on the ground the whole evening and then uh, sometime about 4 o'clock in the morning they were getting tired so uh, they were getting ready to uh, back up uh, and by the time the sunrise started, they lifted the top sodium off of the ground to put into their back pickup, and there was a rattlesnake under the top sodium. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know how long that takes me there all along. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely plenty of them around here. Usually people say they will climb into their washing machines and uh, if you leave the lid up. Um, I think uh, I think it was Jim told us that. 
So maybe it might not be true. The other gym in Buckeye. I need to test the gym in Buckeye on email one day to see how he's doing. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like last time I talked to him, he was like, okay, uh, I'm going to be disappearing uh, and uh, you won't hear from me for a couple of years is basically what he said. <laughs> the same he'll be away for a few years so it's been a few years so maybe it's time to send him an email to tell him to come back on 3913 it's the radio i gotta get going here and chronicle some stuff i have a good talk bye all right, Alex, it was good catching up with you. She was just uh, questioning the temperature in the house because my I told you earlier the temperature thing's on the radio. It says it's 103 degrees. So <laughs> I guess Rag Chew heats up the radio. All right, 73, KG6AFS. 73, KG7HVR. Tell Jim and Marilyn I said hello.